Okay, so I'm sure everyone can hear me properly because I'm using this microphone on my phone. Uh, the other interview that I did today at 21 minutes because I put everything together, the microphone didn't sound that well because I was using my 4K Ultra camera and I turned up the frequency too much, but I explained everything in the video. So when you watch it, you'll see what I'm talking about. Anyways, the video that you're about to watch is the movie version of the three videos I posted recently of me interviewing some men at the hospital that I went to today because I was supposed to go to the hospital to, you know, uh, get my final checkup for my uh, fractured finger that happened in the accident. I can't close my fist because my finger is still fractured. However, uh, in spite of that, everything is okay. Everything is good. It was a good day. I had some good interviews, some good interactions. So the question that I asked today, oh, got to go get my Bible. I left my Bible over there. Give me a sec. I'm back. I'm back. <clears throat> I'm back. I left my Bible over there. Sorry about that. You know what I should have done? I should have paused the video, but... It's too late. So I asked the question today, uh, does God cause anyone to get sick? Of course, I'm in the affirmative on that. But I wanted to see what everyone else had to say because I know, I knew rather, that they would be on the, uh, on the offensive or on the denial side of things because most Jamaicans are either Pentecostal or Seventh-day Adventist and both denominations don't believe that God makes people sick, at, at least based upon my experience of talking to them. Anyways, I'm just going to read two passages that I use in the video so that you can know my perspective and why I believe that God makes people sick. So in Second Corinthians, Second Chronicles 21, 18 through 19, the Bible says, so after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable sickness. Now it came about in the course of time at the end of two years that his bowels came out because of his sickness and he died in great pain and his people made no fire for him like the fire for his fathers. So we have someone here who got inflicted by God with an incurable sickness, meaning the sickness cannot be cured. He died in great pain. So God causes sickness, God causes pain. There's a lot more I could read, but I'm not going to do that. And the last one I quoted in my interview was 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 7. Speaking of Paul, Paul says, Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, which would be sinful, right? Yeah. There was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Does the devil want us to exalt ourselves? Yes, he does. Which means that the devil would not be sending a messenger to, Jesus, to, to, to Paul to stop him from exalting himself unless God is the one who sent the devil to do that. Because as I said in previous video, the devil has a servant role to God. The devil can do nothing unless God permits him to do it or gives him uh, the blessing to do it. So Paul here is being tormented. Paul here is in distress. Paul here is being tormented by a messenger of Satan to keep him from sinning, which is to exalt himself. This is the work of God. So God causes torment sickness for both his people, his children, Christians, and his enemies. Those are the worldlings, the non-Christians. But you're going to see in the videos that are coming after this one how people don't believe that, and I have to, uh, I have to change their mind or their opinions. But you'll see for yourself. Enjoy the video. Okay, so my name is Everton. I'm a YouTuber. Everything on my YouTube channel is about God and theology and so on. And you and I know that people get sick in the world. Today's question is, do you think God has anything to do with people getting sick? 
do I think that God have anything to do with people getting sick? Yeah, like, does God make anyone sick? I don't think so. All right, so, do you believe that God is sovereign and all-powerful? Yes. So, could God stop someone from getting sick? Yes. So, why does anyone get sick if God can stop it? Wouldn't he want to stop it? Well, sometimes it's, it's because of sin. So you would say that every time someone gets sick, it's sin? Not every time. What about the other times? Well, there are, time, there are times when he, he, would, he would allow it so that in, at the end, his name can be glorified. Okay, that's, that's a good answer because I believe that God makes people sick for two reasons and then we'll talk about it because I got my Bible right here so that I'm not saying anything unbiblical God makes people sick for two reasons reason one for judgment and reason two for sanctification for example in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 Paul says there's a thorn in my flesh that has been given to me a messenger of the devil to torment me so that I will not exalt myself would you say the devil wants all of us to exalt ourselves because exalting ourselves is a sin? Of course. But Paul says that there was a messenger of Satan given to him, assuming given to him by God, because to keep you humble is the purpose of God to make sure that you don't exalt yourself. Mm -hmm. True. So that's one of the many verses in Scripture that teaches God's sovereignty over even the devil and evil spirits and that God can permit or use... Hey, are you going to come forward? Oh, thank you. Okay, okay. Yeah, so God can even use evil for good, devil being, the devil being evil, in that if God permitted, as you use the word, the devil to torment Paul, to keep him humble, that is for the purpose of God, to sanctify Paul, because Paul is a Christian, all right? Whereas the other, the other perspective is this. God makes people sick for judgment. For example, in a... There's a book in the Bible called Chronicles, all right? Second Chronicles chapter 21, verse 18. The Bible says, God smote him with an incurable sickness that over a course of five years, his bowels came out and he suffered great pain. You, you gonna look it up? Okay, please do, please do, please do. Because the thing is, if, if we believe that God does not make anyone sick, then that's a scripture that we're gonna have a problem with. All right, so when you when you pull it up, we're gonna look at it. But I'm gonna look at it in my verse too, my Bible as well. So, Second Chronicles, and this is a very good 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 discussion, by the way. All right, so Second Chronicles, twenty one. I'm already there. Looks like you're there too. Twenty one eighteen. Mine says. So after all this, the Lord smote him in his bowels with an incurable sickness. Now it came about in the course of time, at the end of two years, that his bowels came out because of his sickness, and he died in great pain, and his people made no fire for him like the fire of his fathers. That's what my Bible says, that God made him sick. So when someone says God makes no one sick, how do they deal with this passage? And not only this passage, but also throughout the Bible, when God would strike someone with pestilence, strike someone with sickness, like the Egyptians, for example. Yeah, yeah, you see what I'm saying? So when someone says to you, yo, God makes no one sick, how do they deal with those verses? Unless what they're saying is unbiblical. Well, as I said, as I said to you before, it's, it's sometimes these things happen so that God can... His name can be glorified at the, at the end, at the end process. And I said that that's the answer to, to the whole question. And that God permits, allows, and causes at times people to be sick, to glorify himself in judgment for the wicked, or to glorify himself in uh, sanctification when he causes his children, the Christians, to be humble or to be sanctified. True, true. So you would say you learned something today, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a, new, that's a new perspective. Yeah, so if any of us get sick, 
it is for God's purpose. Remember that verse in Romans 8, 28, which says, God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So me, for example, I was involved in a car accident and this finger got fractured and my shoulder got a little bit dislocated. And the whole time I was in the hospital, I'm like, God, your purpose is being fulfilled. I wasn't saying, the devil did this to me. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? I was like, God. Because a lot of times, a lot of times persons give, give precedence to the devil. Exactly. In things that he doesn't even know about. Exactly. So I didn't blame the devil. I said, God, your purpose is being fulfilled in my life because I know the word of God. And knowing this, the Bible, is how we are encouraged, how we are sanctified, and how we are to live our life. Yeah, so thank you, man. It's a good interview. <laughs> All right, let me cut this off here. So I'm Everton, I, I have a YouTube channel. Everything about my YouTube channel is about God and stuff. Your name is what? My name is Chuck. Sean? Chuck, C-H-A-D, Chad. Oh, Chad, okay. So today's question is, Chad, do you think God causes sickness in any way? Well, Be sure. because, because you're aware that people around us are sick, right? So would you say God causes any of this in any way? Well, most likely, I think, uh, I think um, God will, will, um, will, 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 will give the enemy sickness. You know? God will let them find pain in the giants and having a fever in bed and cold mm -hmm. and stuff like that because God edified the enemy and you know, stole them down amongst you. So you would say that, so you would say that the enemies of God, God would make them sick at times. Yes, man. Okay, I believe that too. But, um, um, that will even try to upset the ban of, of Christ, understand? So, does God only make his enemies sick, or does God make his enemies sick and sometimes his followers sick? Well, life might as well for like a reason, understand? So you'd say that, okay, so, so this is what I always say. I say that God makes people sick for two reasons. Reason one is for judgment. And reason two, and reason two is for sanctification or holiness. So, when God makes His enemies sick, it's for judgment. When God makes His children or His people sick, it's for sanctification and holiness. Because God is a real time and a hand time God. A real time and a hand time God. Um, God. I think that's that, that, that's the way it be. God will even like the enemy or the sick or people of His own because if God ever calls you. And you're misleading yourself from from cars. Gotta have, gotta have a way to, 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 to bring it down if you're too high. That's true. That's true. And what I said earlier, there there are passages for that. Like for example, in Second Corinthians twelve seven, when Paul says that a thorn has been given to me in my flesh, a messenger from the devil, to torment me, so that I will not exalt myself. To exalt yourself is to do something wrong in the sight of God. So if God allows something to happen to you that's torment or that's bad or like a sickness and it causes you to be humble, that's God causing sickness or causing something bad for a good reason, good purpose. As you said earlier, everything's for a reason. But for the enemies of God, an example is in the Bible, uh, Second, Second Chronicles chapter 21, verse 18, it says that God smote one of his enemies with an incurable sickness that over the course of two years, his bowels fell out and he died in great pain. Yeah, so you're right. God judges his enemies. You know, I'm never hiding up. Yeah, yeah, because God is a jealous God. God are calling you and you're misleading yourself and God has like said before. God will be put, put you down if you're too high. Right. God, God want God to call you. God to call you. God need you. To come as well. To cleave unto him. So well, well I, I wouldn't use the word need. I would say desire or want. But uh, have you ever heard uh, the the gospel message from the Bible? Oh, sure. That's the last question. So the gospel message is this. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That he came from heaven, having been sent by God, coming willingly to live a perfect life, to give himself to die on the cross, to be buried, and then rise again. What does those things mean? So when he died, we know that the Bible says the wages of sin is death. You've sinned, I've sinned. We deserve to die. And in order for God to forgive us and be a good God, someone has to bear the punishment. Someone has to bear our penalty. That's what Christ did. 
And then when he was buried, the Bible says that he rose from the dead on the third day. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 4, verse 25, that he was given over for our transgressions. And he rose from the dead for our justification. What is justification? It means that God can declare you and I righteous because he has given us the righteousness of Christ. So in the eyes of God, you're perfect, I'm perfect because we have trusted and repented of our sins, trusted in Christ, believed in Christ, and so on, by the grace of God. So that's the gospel message. It's the good news that God can forgive sinners like you and I. We put our trust in him. You, you believe that? Yeah, yeah. yeah man. Yeah. All right, Chad. Thank you, buddy. That's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. Yeah. Put on the, put, put on the new self and put away the old self. Amen, man. Amen. I like that. Thank you again. I'm going to buy some water. I'm thirsty right now. All right. Bless you and respect. All right. So, let me, let me turn up this. All right. So, my name is Everton. I have a YouTube channel. It's all about God and theology and stuff. And I ask different questions in my interviews. Today's question is this. Do you think God causes sickness in any way, shape, or form? To me, no, because God is here to, um, to serve and to protect you, so I don't believe that. So, if you believe that God is here to serve and protect us, do you think that sometimes He fails to protect us if we still get sick and still have harm? No, I don't believe in that, because God is always here to protect His people and His children. So, it's only, if only the enemy is trying like Satan also trying to do that. So would you agree with the statement that God is sovereign and powerful and nothing can happen to his people unless he allows or permits it? Yes, I believe that. God is God protects his people still, but only if he wants that to happen to you, he will allow that. Otherwise nothing else can happen. See, we're getting somewhere. So if God permits that one of his people get sick, it is for a good reason. In light of Romans 8.28, God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to purpose. So you would say, probably, just saying that, maybe you'll say this. If something bad happens to one of God's children, God permitted it for a good reason. Yeah, everything happens for a reason still. So, if something has to happen to make things better, you're going to do it. You're going to allow that to happen. All right. So a lot of times when I have this question asked, someone will say, God does not cause anyone to be sick. And then I will quote an, a passage from the Bible, 2 Chronicles 21, 18. It says, God smite him with an incurable sickness that over the course of two years, his bowels fell out and he died in great pain. One of God's enemies. So do you think that at least God's enemies are people that he causes to be sick for judgment? In light of 2 Chronicles 21.18. Mm. Well, even, even God's enemy, he don't want him to get sick neither. Even if he's his enemy, he's always there for them. Same way, although they're fighting, and he's always there for them. So I don't believe that. So that makes me curious how you would think about, uh, have you heard of the... The historical narrative of the Egyptians and the Israelites and Pharaoh and when God delivered the Egyptians, well, delivered the Israelites from the Egyptians, uh, God gave them, was it, uh, six plagues. Some of the plagues were pestilence, sickness, uh, gnats, and the last plague was God killing all the firstborn. You remember that? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, so because I read through the Bible uh, almost every month, I see these things and I ask questions like this because I'm aware that a lot of people don't really read the Bible and know the Bible that much. So I will bring these subjects up to correct or to inform. All right. So if I say God does not kill anyone and someone says, but wait a minute, but God killed all the firstborn. <laughs> or if I say that God doesn't kill anyone, I say, but wait, you remember the flood? Who brought the flood? And all the people on the earth died and it was God who brought the flood. You see what I'm saying? So... The, these things for judgment for judgment so the biblical the biblical perspective on this question is this god is sovereign all powerful and nothing can happen in this world unless god allows it for his children he allows things to happen for good reasons 
for good reasons, for sanctification, for holiness, and for his enemies, for judgment, and that God will do things to his enemies for judgment. And finally, this is the final question. Have you ever heard this word called the gospel and what it is? Oh, the gospel is like, um, like, same like, oh, you are doing it now in the same way, because you are preaching the gospel, you know, the right things. So what would you say the gospel is, like the gospel message? It's a word. Gospel is a word that you must look into and realize that it's a true God. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remind you of what it is, and you can tell me if you remember it, all right? So in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 6, it says, um, Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried, and he rose again according to the scriptures. So the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That he died for the sins of all those who would believe. He was buried. And then he rose again for our justification. That when God justifies us after trusting in Christ, believing in Christ, and repenting of our sins, we are seen by God as being perfect because we are the righteousness of God because Christ's righteousness was given to us. And that's the good news that God can forgive sinners like you and I because we've all sinned. Everybody is sinned. Yeah. And that's what the word gospel means. It means good news. And the good news is God can forgive and is willing to forgive sinners. Right. That is good. I believe in that. There you go. That was a good interview, right? Thank you for your time, man. Blessing, blessing.